What is good? We're back. Another bipod edition of the FF Dynasty. How y'all doing out there? Got my man Jay Wayne over here. Got my guy, uh, what's his name back there? It's been so long. B-Rad? Brad. Old Brad. Bradley? Brad Keselowski. He's holding it down back there. He's got two for your crew. No big co tonight. Hopefully we'll have him on a podcast. Maybe a guest at this point. Um, <laughs> but hopefully we'll get my man back soon. Um, how was Thanksgiving, buddy? Everything everything good? Uh, you spent it with me. I don't really care. All right. <laughs> so it, was, it was fantastic. Neighborhood Thanksgiving. Neighborhood fam. Yeah. A little oyster roast the night before. A mm. little, you know, get down breakfast. Uh, mm. And then uh, a, a, an early. Uh, for whatever reason, you eat th- meals on, th- on holidays on like at a, the oddest time ever it's like oh today only we're gonna eat at three o'clock in the afternoon i eat at three o'clock no other day ever yeah it's just a just a, a rare and you just odd, like snack trying to get up to it and, yeah well i hope you guys had a good thanksgiving it's not good for not being hammered by the time it's time to eat i could tell you that it's good for naps though it is it's yeah they, yeah they're just a really just evil system that they have here it's either hammered or sleeping <laughs> I guess that's just a degenerate schedule. That's life. All right. So today we are going to put our finger on the pulse of some ADP. Going to mostly stay in the top 50 at the end. We'll kind of probably venture out to see what's uh, what's up with some other guys outside of it. Um, this is DLF ADP. Um, and it's probably, you know, a few weeks out of date a little bit here just because, you know, they gather this over over a month and then, you know, take forever by the time it actually comes out, there's a week or two. So, you know, some of these might not have quite caught up or may have dropped down because of various different reasons. But uh, either way, it's a good way to kind of keep your finger on the pulse. I, I know it's said a lot, but, you know, don't hate players, hate ADP. Um, and this is just why it's a good idea to keep your eye kind of what's going on. And this is a good exercise kind of for everyone to do and why we like to check in, especially in the off season. But it's been a while since we kind of looked at it. We want to see where they fall now. You know, obviously everyone's value from league to league is going to vary. Um, but this can give you a good starting place to kind of figure out who to buy and sell. If you see discrepancies in your view from what kind of the public is is telling you a little bit here. And like I said, every league is going to be different. We have home leagues that are very hard to trade in. People just keep it close to the vest. Uh, but you can is a good way to kind of keep, you know, find maybe somebody who's just overrating or underrating somebody because of some that one game or two games or something silly that that uh, you don't really understand. Um, but, you know, you don't have to do the buying and selling. It's not a requirement. You uh, should trade but some. But it's suggested. Unless you're just grinding all day, every day in your free time on a podcast you're trying to make work, <laughs> you should um, probably do some trading. So this is also obviously then a good way to also wrap your mind around startups um, and kind of see how that is going. And every year is going to be different. And, you know, we'll kind of get into some of that as we roll through this. And just that's the, you know, again, don't hate players ADPs. There's going to be pods of players and you got to figure out, you know, oh, I like, yeah, I can't take him there, but I like these five guys here. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to do here today. And without further ado, let's get rolling. All right. So we're just going to go kind of round by round here. First round, round one, round one Jamar Fight. Chase, number one, Taylor, number two, JT, that is Jonathan Taylor. He gets a full name. Uh, JJ, Justin Jefferson, number three. It's Najee. just whatever I can fit in there, okay? And when we got we got the color coordinated. I'm not even reading off of that. I'm wide receivers the, the list, yeah. <laughs> four year for um, wide receivers in blue, running backs in pink. If you can right. figure that out. Um, and then if you're listening on the podcast, Najee Harris in four, DeAndre Swift at five, CD Lamb at six, Dalvin Cook at seven, CMC, Christian McCaffrey at eight, uh, D- DK Metcalf at nine, AJ Brown at ten, Kyle Pitts at eleven, and Tyreek Hill uh, rounding out round one here with uh, this ADP that we have here. Um, so right off the rip, I'm going to go ahead and say you're wrong. Mm. Like that 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 Donald Trump uh, meme. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> um, Give him a it's, little. It's got it from, you know, hey, I'm not, again, when we did the Najee chase thing in the offseason of, well, on the rookie drafts, you're not wrong for taking either one. I prefer running backs in a um, 
the elite running backs at the top of a rookie draft because I feel like it's you know really the only way to kind of not deplete your roster and be able to maybe add a great running back to that whereas you know maybe you're not going to be able to trade for a Jamar Chase necessarily but you could find there's a you know a lot of wide receivers uh that you can trade for for one reason or another um and if you have a lot of running backs you could always acquire uh it's a lot easier to acquire running or acquire wide receivers than it is running back so I would take Jonathan Taylor number one right now he seems to be the clear cut number one RB he's getting, you know, the usage. He's kind of the engine of that team. If you will, we'll kind of use that a lot for these kind of guys where he makes that team kind of tick They're They've kind of worked him in. They massaged him a little bit year one and, and worked it in. And now it's just full blown, uh, the JT show. He's, you know, absolutely a monster. Um, and you saw it last week against the bucks who nobody really runs against, obviously sans Vita Vea there a little bit, I believe. Mm. Um, but you know, during the second half of that game, got him going and they should have been throwing it to him more. Like you just got to get this guy as many touches as you can. Um, Still within, within reason. For you. let's not, let's not, let's not Christian McCaffrey. I'm out of the league. Um, uh, but, uh, I would say I would take Jonathan Taylor one, any, any discrepancies there. I think I'm, I'm going to assume that you're going to pretty much disagree. Straight facts, baby. You gotta take JT one. <laughs> Subjective, okay. All right, and, and but I mean, know. right there, there's your. We're not gonna have the discussion today, but we're gonna get into it. The whole zero RB thing. There's there's the discussion. Chase or Jonathan Taylor, you know, and then these guys took took Chase. He jumped up twenty five spots over the course of this awesome season he's having as a rookie. Can't be mad at you. I want the running back. I'm not yeah. necessarily ready to go zero RB, but. In summation, don't pigeonhole yourself into any draft strategy. When you get in right. these startups right. next right. year, you don't. If it, it seems like everybody's the, the whole RB zero RB thing is is just boiling up again. It's it's cyclical, and with all these running backs getting hurt recently, the top guys, uh, Sands, you know, Jonathan Taylor, Najee Harris, and Swift. These top three up here well, on now. the left. Of course, he did go out uh, the past game, and he does stay kind of nicked up. And so, uh, buddy, buddy plays through it. But you know, if everybody's gonna be heavy zero RB next year, you gotta zag when people are zigging, or zig when people are zagging. I don't know which one, right? Whatever I mean, the other and, is, and we'll kind of you know touch on that more as we we get through these list of guys here, and, and kind of you know just talk about how this is panning out and what we like and what we don't like. Um, so for now, we'll table that for a second. Uh, but we definitely want to get back to that. Um, what else in the first round here? Jo- Justin Jefferson, if you wanted to say I'm taking Justin Jefferson first overall, I, I couldn't, I really couldn't, you know, smite you or, or say anything bad about you there. Smite me, uh, mighty smiter. Uh, I, I think, uh, I think, I think that will be fine. Jamar Chase just is the new hot item. I think only God you know? can smite. I don't Whatever. know. Uh, or Whatever. Bruce. Bruce. Um, I couldn't be upset with that. Najee or, Harris. Or CD. I mean, if you, I, I probably would have CD third, like this ADP, and I would have Chase first. Uh, but I can't really be mad at any three of those guys. And honestly, any six of those dudes, I can't really be mad if you want to take any of them. Um, yeah. Najee at four, That's is that too rich for your blood there? Seems seems just like a, a little rich for my blood. I just don't like it right now. I, I just haven't settled into the idea of him being there. It just seems like he just really jumped all the way up there. He's he's having a good season, and, you know, there is a little bit of um, pause with what where the Steelers are going. It looks like maybe they might fall off a cliff before the season's even over. It's been a bad stretch here. Maybe they're about to fall off. They have kind of rebuilt that offensive line. It's not good right now, but I think, you know, it'll continue to improve. They got they got it in there early, uh, rebuilding that thing, and, and you know, maybe maybe you get an Aaron Rodgers. Maybe you get... Uh, right, and they got cap. Get, I think they got uh, a ton of cap next year. Russell Wilson. And, and worst case scenario, maybe you end up with somebody like Jimmy G who, you know, can at least facilitate an offense enough to, to, to keep a run game intact and, and would keep the Steelers uh, kind of rolling forward and not give you too much pause. But <clears throat> it seems a little crazy right now for him to be up there, but I, I, I can I get it, I guess. Um, I mean, who are you going to take instead of Najee well, ex- for? I mean, exactly. You know? Well, that's what, that's, what we're, that's what we're here to kind of talk about. Because it's either Swift, CD, or you know, Pitts. That's really the only options for me that I would take it for over 
Swift Najee. is here next. And like you said, it's just, I think him always having that Q next to his name, if you own him, is is maybe even keeping him from really even blossoming into being the guy that, yeah, maybe he should be the guy that you take it at five or four or three or two or one. Uh, but the, the fact that maybe he's limiting, he's limiting himself from really being the man. And then, you know, but he's still absolutely been really strong fantasy points wise for you when he plays. And now he's probably going to miss a little bit of time here. Um, we thought that there could be, you know, a lot of check downs and he's been really solid in the passing game. And we think this offensive line should be good for years to come. So things point up for Swift. It just also gives me pause there to just, it's been so long of guys that were, you know, that you weren't worried about drafted running backs that you weren't worried about, uh, drafting them and and them having some sort of problem with what's going on as, as all the guys that have been at the top recently for the last handful of years and you know it's just it's just it's right it's right now is the time to start wrapping your mind around these things i don't i don't technically i don't love who do i even like in the first round i don't even know nobody i don't really like anybody like i, I like uh, the receivers i, mean, I, like, I swift. like give me I like, swift I, mean, I like Chase, I like Taylor, I like Jefferson, and then, like you said, down there, a little further down, I like Pitts. Other than that, I got questions about all the rest of the dudes. Which, disclaimer, this DLF ADP is not tight end premium. We're always proponents of tight end premium, and that's what we mostly play in and think about. So Pitts, you know, probably would be up in this top six if this was tight end premium when doing it. But even so, I mean, not even tight end premium, I'm fine with it. Back to Swift for a second, though. I mean, sure, you can make the argument that he's always got this Q tag next to him, but you could also say he, he's playing well through it. And he's everything you could want as a receiver. He's electric. He can break big runs. He's playing on a shit box team. And he's still producing every week for you. He did, he did go out super early on a Thursday at noon, but that, that shit happens, uh, especially with these RBs from time to time. But, I mean, I just to, to see him doing what he's doing... Yeah, that's I mean, fantastic. He's, he's still so damn young. He's he's he's, uh, he's twenty two. He's he's been he's been pretty good. He's been productive. Um, he he just you know he if you watch Lions game he exits a decent amount and then you know comes back a little bit but seems hampered and just seems you know like maybe a Dalvin Cook kind of trajectory here where that's great but could be you know just a bunch of times where he just misses little parts and pieces and you hope that there's never a serious one and and that's what kind of comes with the territory and running backs it's just hard for me and I was a big DeAndre Swift proponent coming into the year um I just because I thought he was being slept on a little bit even and now now that he's getting a little bit of do here I feel like it's almost come come too far um but then you got CeeDee Lamb here at six um you want to take CeeDee over this, Swift this Go is for it. uh probably a lot of dynasty rankings should be almost foreshadowing of what could be. A lot of the time, sometimes it gets caught up in a little bit being more like redraft. Um, and I think CD kind of has you both ways there where, you know, if if he was in maybe and we've kind of seen it a little bit, but maybe Zeke and, and Pollard and them being a more balanced attack is kind of keeping them from being that offense that really explodes for all the receivers. And CD Lamb's been really good. But the fact that there is, you know, three guys in that ecosystem receiver wise I think maybe you're projecting CD to once he is what we all think he's going to be the man in Dallas eventually this is maybe more the projection of that than actually what he is currently I mean I, I guess that's that's accurate but I don't know that it's that much of a projection because they have been without Cooper and they have been without Gallup and CD has shown you what it can be but he's gotten a little nicked up and I, I, I don't think you know my Gallup's an unrestricted free agent Amari Cooper, I believe, has like, man, where's the where's Amari Cooper on that board? He's got six dead, six million dead next year. So I don't know whether they're gonna keep him. I would imagine that this COVID stretch and him being nicked up is probably souring him to the to the Cowboys. I don't know if it's good or bad if he leaves, but in terms of Ceedee Lamb, I mean, I think next year you're gonna see, given health, exactly what yeah. you're projecting. But it's it's. This isn't as much of a projection. I usually don't like to project that much. Oh, I said in terms I, of a I top said six I pick. Said I think it's a little bit of combo platter of both um, right now, and and he's been okay without Amari Cooper. There's there's been one 
you know, he had the big game against Atlanta, but it was Atlanta, and then they struggled against Denver, um, and then he, you know, against Kansas City, that wasn't that was that was just a bad game all around for them. So the, the Cowboys have been struggling a little bit more on offense, um, and they've been, you know, from that first game to now, you know, the first game is what you want to see out of your fantasy receivers in in uh, Dallas, but it's not maybe the recipe for actually winning football games. Um, and when they've been more balanced and the, and the running backs go over 100 yards, um, they win more games. Um, but, yeah, I got no problem with C.D. Lamb at that point. I feel better about him maybe than, than Swift and Harris at that point. But I, I, I lean I always lean the running back. So I just got to start wrapping my head around where those guys are right now. Um, and then if I want to do that, and that's why, again, this is an important process. Give me that um, RB, baby. So then here comes Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey, the stalwarts that have been up at the top of this. Dalvin Cook's probably going to be dropping down because right. of an injury and some personal matters. Christian McCaffrey, again, probably going to be dropping down because of some injuries. Um, Dalvin Cook, you know, is what it is. You kind of got to drop him down. A lot of questions uh, kind of around there. Christian McCaffrey, however, you know, over the last two years, I've gotten people to sour on him, but he's just a guy that I'm willing to, you know, I'm just going to ride that that ship out until it won't sail anymore. I feel like he's going to be a bounce back guy. Hasn't had any real big injury problems uh, his entire career. And then, you know, I thought he's I'm, made a glass. I'm hoping this is just, you know, a, a bad stretch here. And maybe they did use him up. Maybe he won't be what he is, but I'm willing to go down with that ship. Everybody probably has a guy or two like that, and that's not a guy, bad guy to tie your wagon to. I think the receiving game can keep him great. He's still only 25 years old. Mm -hmm. um, it is precarious that they shut him down right now. Um, just out of note, like it's just like all of a sudden, like there's no chance of him coming back. So I, I think maybe there is a possibility that the Panthers ownership group and all that is like, well, we paid this guy a lot of money, haven't gotten anything from him. Maybe we're going to try to figure out how to. Um, ship this guy off and maybe he won't be a Carolina Panther and maybe he will be a part of a of a uh, Deshaun Watson deal or something along those lines but it does uh, seem like they've been seems, floating trading offers and and if yeah. you were wanting to trade him you wanted why, to be healthy why, I could why see cut him why cut down. the cord this quickly they are only 5 and se there's right. 5 and 7 which puts them right, right in, in the mix there like you in the wanna, NFC like there's only like a few right. teams with winning records in the NFC I think is what I heard uh, the offensive line isn't good but when they're a different team when McCaffrey plays and when McCaffrey doesn't play he's an engine just like I said with Jonathan Taylor um right. and that team and, is totally different and like I just hate hearing that argument i know you do too you've said it a million times oh you can't pay you know we hate the argument that you can't that's why you can't pay running backs it's just like yes they're more prone to injury because they're handling the rock more but they're handling the rock more because they're so important to the offense and like what they yeah. do the great ones and they make the great the great make, that's the caveat the it's game. the great ones it's the great ones right and, not every running back should get paid but christian mccaffrey is the catalyst and the when saying he's is, out that's there's that the offense is totally different the saying is that you pay them for what they've done not what they're about to do and then christian mccaffrey had a really high usage rating uh for for a long time unheard of usage rating um but you know, I, I still think there's going to be plenty in there. I think he'll get over this stretch of being nicked up. And I think he'll, you know, again, when he was out there, he did nothing but crush. Um, and it's just unfortunate that you haven't been able to get him. And and I don't know what this answer is for paying running backs. I hate it. I, I love the running back position and I love watching the great ones. I feel like we're getting robbed right now of seeing greatness from McCaffrey because it is so much fun to watch. And the great ones are huge difference makers to the team and how they operate. Um, and, right. You know, you could do it with a committee. You could, there's again, there's and you probably need another. Just like guy. there's they, a bunch they, of different ways to draft a team. There's a bunch of different ways to run an NFL franchise. You can get by with using a committee, or you can get by with having, you know, a dog and a nice. You can get by with Zeke and Pollard, or you can get by with, uh, you know, just a, a hodgepodge committee of of trash. But I mean, you see, all of a sudden, the Seattle Seahawks run game without Chris Carson isn't super great. And you know, that's just one quick example that came to the top of my head, but. You know, some of those guys are important, whether everybody likes to admit it or not, because it got trendy to be that they don't matter. But what the the some of them don't matter, but elite ones really can matter. Um, so Pay anyway, them. get your money, fellas. Um, DK Metcalf and AJ Brown are the next two on the list, and that's kind of you know it's a weird weird spot to be in. I, I don't love either one of them right now. Whereas I thought that AJ Brown was probably my dynasty wide receiver one coming into the year. Right. And um, I would have said DK. So I, and I think we both got to back off. Of now, that now. Now you have maybe Russell not being around in Seattle. Yeah, he's and out of there, AJ man. Brown has just been unhealthy as all get up. And, and 
Granted, he was behind the eight ball to begin the season. He had knee surgery, I think, on both knees and missed a bunch of time. Coming in, wasn't ready to go. It's just probably rushed back too soon. Probably the same thing with Christian McCaffrey. Like, them boys want to get back and, and, and perform for their teams, and they probably rush it back a little bit too much. And, and that, you know, I get the struggle. As an organization, do you let the man – do you let do you, do you get him out of his own way, or do, or do you let him risk it? And then, you know, one unlucky play – for anyone in the whole entire NFL and she can go south like right yeah and I mean it's it's true and now, now AJ Brown's out again for a little while and DK seems to be struggling to, to get you he was better with Geno Smith mm-hmm. Russell's clearly not Russell's right not right um He's, but uh fingers messed up if 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 you're not if DK isn't tied to a superstar uh all-world quarterback and Russell Wilson how attractive is he to you like you said Gino propped him up a little bit so if somebody does get in there and feed him the rock he could still be fine but maybe doesn't quite have the ceiling that you thought he was going to have tied to Russell for uh that that for sure he'll probably be just fine and he is still only 23 years old so I think he'll be awesome maybe I'll finally be able to get some DK next year because because it's going to give you a little break of maybe it's possibly going to drop getting even in there. more from nine. And I that's, the, that's again, this is why you're doing this. You see them where they are now, then maybe they drop a little bit. And now you can finally jump in and be like, all right, well, there is a little risk here, but I can finally get in. And I still really like the player. Like Christian McCaffrey's going to drop some, and I'm probably still going to get in. Right. DK Metcalf's going to drop some for you. You're probably still going to get in there, regardless if Russell's there or not. AJ Brown's probably going to drop a little bit. I'm probably still going to get in because when he's on the field, he's awesome. And maybe this is just a run of, of terrible luck and, and, and For a stretch sure, of, of not... Keenan Allen like things, but there's also times where it just is what it is and they never get right. Uh, it goes both ways. Um, but, you know, <laughs> like I think me. it's a lot, a lot easier and a lot more common for everybody to immediately jump on. Oh, he's done. He's made a glass. They love and, fucking and that, they just cheap toilet paper. It's way cooler to just kick so somebody to the curb cool. and say that. But it's he not. Sucks. It's not cool. You look I'm, like a fucking I'm saying asshole. in general. Like, I'm telling you, though, but I know that's what they feel like. <laughs> right. And they're getting on Twitter and you have to have some fucking quick staunch reaction. You look like an idiot to a normal right. person. Let's relax and see what right. happens. Let it play out. Right. Um, so then we get to 11 and 12. We got Kyle Pitts and Tyree Kill. To me, like you said, we're always playing premium. But Kyle Pitts seems to me to be one of the safest guys out here to take. You're, I could easily elevate him up into the 3, 4, 5 range. Um, one range even if you were getting crazy with it because tight he's shown premium. you in tight end premium we're talking and mm-hmm. even if not i could elevate him some up over some of these question mark guys uh you know that are that we just named on the back half of this first round he doesn't seem like a question mark to me he was the unicorn coming in he's shown you that he can be that unicorn it's not a great situation right now um but and he just needs to put a little bit more together. And, and you know, right. tight ends usually do take a little bit longer to develop. So if, if this guy turns into anywhere near what a Travis Kelsey was, if Travis Kelsey was 21 years old, he would be the number one or number two pick in tight end premium because he scores in tight end premium. A guy like Travis Kelsey, who demands that kind of target volume that he, he had over the last few years is wide receiver one or two and tight end one or two like mm-hmm. within premium. Right. Um, so when the guys who uh, demand that high target share, which Kyle Pitts, I believe, will and kind of probably already is, um, That that's worth its weight in gold. And to have that guy for as long as you could have that dynasty team. You can um, hold him for 10 years. You can have just him for 10 years. insane. And, and uh, you're just true, seeing the surface of what could be with Kyle Pitts. And, you know, maybe you're saying I'm crazy for taking a tight end that high, but I'm, I'm – I would. I, I like what I'm seeing. I liked what I saw coming in. Everybody likes him. And Everybody again, in him. the court of public opinion, that asset is probably never, never going to depreciate. Gonna be value. Unless, it's going to take years for people to it's get off of the Kyle ACLs Pitts or to get off the Kyle Pitts trains if he just needs to suck for multiple years, and that right. value will always be uh, able to be returned. So I really right. like uh, Kyle Pitts being elevated here, and then Tyree Kill. At 27 years old, I guess I can still get down with it. He's tied to Mahomes for another year. Um, and then he looks like he still has it. He has something different than anybody else has he on has the field. He has it, his and they is, need it. Right. His shit is different when you watch him play. Um, He's got it, and they need it. And imagine how bad it would be in Kansas City without Tyreek. Because he's an unrestricted free agent in 2023. So they got to figure something else out. They got to tie. They got to. They got to give him some more money. They got to figure it out because if he's out of there, imagine how bad it would have been in Kansas City, you know. And real quick, back to Pitts, just for one second, like a couple things. Like he's he's 
He's shown you on the field what he can do, and he could probably benefit from another, like who do they else do they have to throw it to? He's probably in all the attention. Nobody. It, it definitely hurts having Ridley out, and and for him to come in and, and produce and show you the wow plays, show you the yak, show you the incredible contested catchability, the red zone presence, even though he hasn't gotten loose uh, from a touchdown perspective, and and it's just he's shown you so much, and you didn't even know if you you, you didn't I didn't expect to see all that out of a rookie first year tight end. You know, yeah. for him to come out and show dominance at points, not consistency necessarily. Uh, I think he's still like tight end eight or something, but like just the just just the potential, man. It's just you you've already seen it, realized, right. and all he can do is get better. Give him give him another year or two under his belt, and he's going to be twenty three and, and just a fucking monster. So totally fine with Pitts anywhere that you want to take him. Um, we want to move on around two. Uh, yeah, let's let's roll on to, to round two. So so you know, so far we'll we'll. we'll probably recap at some point kind of how we're feeling about this whole thing and what we would maybe do as far as things have been going on just kind of giving you a general feeling so round two you got Alvin Kamara leading it off Saquon Barkley Devontae Adams uh, DJ Moore at 16 that's wide receiver eight uh, Austin Eckler 17 Stefan Diggs 18 uh, Aaron Jones 19 Nick Chubb 20 Zeke 21 so we're, we got a nice chunk of these older kind of stalwart running backs who have been around for a long time crushing for you and your and your old reliables here and then we're going to get into cooper cup uh terry mclaurin and then javante williams so uh, this is a fun little chunk here alvin kamara we're starting right there obviously um seems like a guy that i would be okay with if you were talking second round now mm, seems like maybe it's still a little bit high for a guy who's 26 probably going to be 27 heading into next season but does seem like a guy that, because of his particular set of skills, mm. um, he could be valuable for you for for years to come here. Um, and and you got a decent amount of faith in that uh, organization. And that was a place that was was linked to Russell Wilson, where he that mm. was on the short list of places that uh, he would go uh, when, when those trade. I don't think were, they have any um, cap, and they just fucking gave Tyson Taysen Hill some more money. Yeah, you know? I'm sure if they had to figure it out, they could. Right. Um, but it's interesting. Again, we're, this is this is this is a weird. This is a weird. Uh, it could be a weird year for a draft. Um, and Alvin Kamara being, you know, down in the second round. You know, it's just kind of where we're at right now. Saquon Barkley, uh, 14. Now we're getting into somebody that all right, 24, 25. Um, if Saquon could maybe drop a little bit more, he might be somebody that maybe I would, that would be the guy that I would target as maybe my first running back and take a real swing on that because, um, we could, we could really see an explosion and a bounce back from Saquon Barkley. Who knows if he'll be a giant? Uh, I would assume not with Gettleman maybe on the, on the next train out of there. Uh, so I, 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 I could still get behind Saquon Barkley, especially since he's probably dropping down a little bit. And then you have Devonte Adams, a 29 year old receiver, uh, it's not with, 29 yet, but about but to be. He will be when you're drafting this team. Well, he, I think he's turning in December. He turns 29. Right. He so. will be when you're drafting this team. So we're talking, you know, basically the next year value of these guys because that's kind of where we're at mm -hmm. uh, at this point. Next year's value. Um, he'll be 29, and, and we don't know what the, the outcome with Rodgers is going to be. Um, so right. Stop. Probably seems like a little high for me to take Devontae Adams here. Like, I, you know, it's just, again, we're, there's been so many guys where it's like, it's probably a little high for me to take this guy. It's like, who the fuck do I even like in these, in the top 24 right now? I don't like a whole lot. I don't like a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, I'll go ahead and say something you're not going to like, but let me get Cooper Cup. Well, why don't we just wait till we get down there? Okay. We're working our way down there. You're talking about Devontae Adams. Let me get Cooper Cup. Um, DJ Moore at, at 16 here properly I, rated I, I would i don't i don't have a feeling either way i'm fine with it i'm not sure i would pull the trigger we've seen uh what could be described as some hall of very good borderline great from him in the beginning of the season when he was getting his his due from sammy d off the rip um and being the guy and it was great and then it's you know it's kind of just dipped and it was it was you know a train wreck there for a couple of weeks just barely and then Cam came in and gave him a little bit of juice, but it just doesn't look like it's it's going to be super great. It might be a little rocky for the for the receivers there in, in uh, Carolina through the through the rest of the year. And and if they do get an upgrade at quarterback, which I think Tepper is going to be all in on figuring that out because he's an aggressive kind of guy and wants to win and is in that new money, new era of of owners here. Um, 
could could be a really good value on DJ Moore if they get a guy who who can get him facilitate him, and that's really all it takes. It just he just needs to have somebody to to be able to feed him. Um, and, and opportunity is is king in a lot of a lot of cases, and right. that's what he You've was getting. Him getting the lion's share of that and, and elevated over Robbie Anderson, that motherfucker. Uh, last year it was Robbie who you had to start over DJ Moore. We had we have both of them in a league, and last year we were predominantly playing Robbie Anderson. This so year, consistent. Got to you know, got to play DJ Moore. Now Robbie Anderson's awful, the worst. The Panthers are just not great on offense. Right. So here's a question about DJ Moore. Like he he's uh, they they've got the fifth year option next year, twenty two for DJ Moore. I would. Do you think they re-sign him? I could see them bringing him back. I mean, uh, I, does does Joe Brady's going to get his a head coaching job, right? Yeah, but maybe it's another year now because unless he goes back to college, I, th- I feel like maybe it just kind of got hot and now it maybe cooled off a little bit here. So you think he's he probably sticks probably around? Probably going to stick around okay. for another little bit. Okay. They did pay Robbie. Maybe they're regretting paying Robbie. They did draft Terrace Marshall, so I don't know what they're going to do. They, they maybe there's maybe they're hoping that Terrace Marshall will take DJ Moore's place and not pay him. But maybe they just bring back DJ Moore because you know he is a, he is a pretty good receiver and right still really young um, twenty four years old so be TBD on that but again I don't I'm I'm neutral on that one I don't hate it I don't love it but I, I'm not opposed to it and I could I could pull the trigger there Austin Eckler going to be twenty seven years old uh, again another guy kind of in the Alvin Kamara vein I'm not saying they play the same just kind of how the usage. Um, right, could, could be similar, so I could PPR see some floor, legs being good offense being although, there for Austin Eckler. But it's, again, it's it's risky being you're 27 and nobody likes the old the, one, the the running back who's 27 is all of a sudden just you know as soon as there's any chink in the armor there everybody's out. Nobody wants anything to do with them. As soon as they get hurt, they're made of glass and and cheap toilet paper. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, in Austin Eckler's defense, I think he's probably a young 27. He's got low mileage, high tread. I don't. I, it, it, it took a little while for him to get going, and they have a steal of a deal right, right. on Austin Eckler. He's been the bright spot. He should for actually right hold now, out. Sure, he, he should, should probably hold out. He probably should. He's RB two right now. Yeah, and just slaying. So, uh, you know, small but gets the goal line work and a ton of PPR points. So, I'm I'm fine, man. You need a, you need a running back. You want to take Eckler? Probably a little high. Let me get it, man. I'm Definitely just, give me Cooper Cup. I'm but. hoping all these guys slide down a little bit more and make it more comfortable to take them, to take the swing on them where I can get some youth up there. And then in the third round, I could swing on maybe a little bit older uh, veteran there. Because right. it just really hurts in those first couple of rounds to to take guys that could be so cl- could fall off a cliff at any moment. Like you're not expecting a 22, 23 year old to fall off a cliff. You, you're like, I got four or five year window and a receiver. You're thinking, hey, I got at least until he's probably 30. Um, you know, now all of a lot of these guys who who get passing game work and, and even a Nick Chubb and Zeke Elliott who are down here, they could be good until they're 30. Who the fuck knows? Um, you know, TB TB 12s rewriting history. Um, obviously, these guys get hit a lot more, but if these guys want to take it seriously and take their body and treat it like a little bit of a temple here, I mean, could, I you saw Z- see, Zeke was eating fruit roll-ups on Hard Knocks. You could He's have an extended twelve diet. shelf life here, but you know, Zeke Zeke came in a little trimmer and had a, had a good season. He's been dead for like three years. And he came been, in trimmer because he was wearing a sweatshirt under his pads at practice oh, to sweat it all out while he's crushing fruit shit. roll-ups. Like, what are you doing? There's I don't think he's on crushing a fruit roll-up. The, not, not if you're t- on the TB12. Well, diet. none of these guys are on the TB12. Well, don't, like, I'm don't, just, don't, I'm, don't keep. I'm don't, just saying that you can. You get hit with a. Uh, you could get. <laughs> cease and desist. You could get on that, and and there is you know some something to you know with a diet and pliability and all those kind of things. There there's might, might must be something to that, um, but you also I think need a Batman to your Robin for a lot of these guys and the Kamaras and the Ecklers. Uh, have always kind of had that for the most part, and they're they're a little more uh, dominant in the receiving game. So th- these guys could be great. It just seems again risky up here. Right. Um, so speaking you- of risk, I did not know why Aaron Jones is up this high. That is just a glaring error in this draft. Like, how are you going to take Chubb? How are you going to take Aaron Jones after before Chubb, Zeke, Javante, Mixon's not on this board. We'll get to him. He should be. Uh, I, He's like 26 and pro- may not have Aaron Rodgers next year. Maybe he does. Uh, but He's 27. Like, how, how are you going to take... He'll be... According to DLF, take, he'll be 28 in in, whoa. in December. Is that accurate? That's a lot. There's no way Aaron Jones can be up this high. No yeah, way. December 2nd. So tomorrow, it's saying that he's going to turn 28. Oh, 
way too old. Way, way, just not not way too old. Just I guess he's way too old. He can't just, take him this high. Just seems like that could be a problem. He can't you're, take him you're, this you're high. You're taking up that high. I mean, it's just Mm-mm. it's again, let him slide down a little bit, and I can mm-hmm. take that guy in the third round who could try to help me win a championship. He'll slide because down. It, all these guys are probably going to have another good year, maybe two, maybe three. Um, but. It just seems like it's it's really hard to spend that money on taking these guys up there. Stephon Diggs, uh, he's twenty eight years old. He's um, got two. He's got probably two more years in Buffalo. Uh, I think they have an option to get out of Diggs in twenty twenty three. There's four point four dead. I think Spot Track says there's there's a an eight point a, an option to get out in twenty two with eight point seven mil dead. But I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah, probably paying both of those years. 22 and 23. So you're getting digs with Josh Allen for another two years. Just really turned, strong. Just turned 28 a few days ago. Um, so, you know, with the receivers, you're probably looking at more of the 30 to 31 window where, you know, you, you probably have um, some life on them. And, and maybe you get a little more than that. Maybe you get a little less than that, you know. Probably banging on two years of fairly elite production with these wide receivers on the board here. Right. It's just a, it's just a lot. Of, and I don't hate, I hate to be an ageist, but it's just like a lot of these guys creeping up in age. And I think Diggs is going to be, you know, strong for your fantasy team for, for another couple of years. So just, uh, he's, he's, he gets it done with footwork and quickness. You know, that, that he just toasted Mark Lattimore mm-hmm. on that. I don't even know what the route was. It was a, an NFL route where he just cooked them. And Lattimore's a good corner, almost made a play on the ball, but he just created that separation. And you're just like, man, that's one of the best corners. And he just toasted him. Right. Uh, he's still got it, and he's still going to be with Josh Allen. I do I do like that combination. I feel pretty decent about Diggs. I'd still take Cooper Cup. I feel I feel pretty good about Diggs as well. Um, just seems seems pretty sharp and, 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 and tied to it. But, again, just seems – all this stuff, I just I don't like I don't like too much right now. Don't like too much right now. Uh, Nick Chubb and then Zeke. So Chubb a little younger than Zeke. Um, I guess I feel okay about Chubb. I, again, wish oh, he would slide great about Chubb. would slide down out of the second round. Um, and he's one of those guys out of all of these guys up here that has had a devastating injury in the past. So that makes you makes me a little bit more nervous. A lot of the Todd Gurley's of the world, uh, where it just all of a sudden it was just boom. You know, Dead. off a cliff because of you know that it knee did situation. Take like a year you could have waited and got him yeah. out for less um, of a hit. But that that worries me a little bit. But damn, he's so good when he's on the field, and he hasn't had really any big problems. Couple of little couple game stints here and there, and he does have Kareem Hunt uh, helping him out a little bit here. Um, so he could be he could be very very strong for for three three more years. Um, so Nick Chubb so far is is one of the guys that I'm. Uh, the least fine with hating on right. of of uh of RBs and and he turns twenty six uh in December, um so end of December he'll be twenty six so you know you're hoping you're getting another elite year and then some maybe two more good years. I also but. probably feel best about Chubb in terms of Aaron Jones, Zeke, and Chubb in terms like having his mind right off the field and putting in the proper amount of work and, and just yeah, being just mad, a, just, humble, and working. That's all he yeah. does is work. Chubb's a, a monster and, and, and strong character dude. I like that in terms of his long term. Yeah. With, with all these guys, like I said a second ago, like you, you want them to drop down far enough so that you can select them. And, and you are now in, I'm always trying to win a title, but you are now in, you select those guys, you got to be title hunting off the rip or trying to recoup that asset, uh, um, you know, that, that, Fairly quickly. Half a year or three quarters of a year to somebody who's trying to win money the first year they get in there. Uh, typically, I do try to win money off the rip. Um, right. I'm trying to draft. Um, I usually don't go productive struggle. i um, trying to figure out how to win and then figure it out from there. Right. And, um, we'll, I, but, and we always find some good youth that will right, value what, will go up. Right, but that's we, you know we, our hit rate on rookies. As soon as you grab through the roof. 110 <laughs> percent. No, it can't rookies. be 110 um, percent. It can only but, be 100 it could be 110. Um, yeah, like I said, you you draft any of these Man. running backs that we've been talking about, you're you're automatically in win now. Got to got to put your chips in and, and go for it, um, or or try to recoup you know a first and and some other assets. You know, moving into hey, I'm not making the playoffs this year, or hey, I don't really have a think I have a realistic chance of winning uh, with these guys. Even if maybe I'm coming in at the sixth spot here. Anything can happen, uh, but. 
that's kind of where you're at when you do that. Okay, so now we're on to Cooper Cup. That's this is this is your guy that you're 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 saying you're down with that. I'm gonna go ahead and say that's gonna be a big no for me. Um, can't but, do it. I mean, I'm not, I'm tr- I'm searching for the argument here uh, to to have because you know you already said you were, you didn't like Devonte and Diggs at those spots, so I can't be like. I mean, I would take Cup over those dudes. That's You're aggressive. not doing that. Probably not. I mean, no. two more years of Cup and Stafford, or Diggs and Josh Allen. Yeah, I mean, well, the difference is, is I guess Cooper Cup's going to be 29 coming into the season, and again, just seems like a rickety 28, 29 years old. He's rickety. Just, he's he's had a lot of Q's and mm. and D's next to the name. And no, he's, play, he's no played D's. a lot. He's played no a lot. D's. He's played a lot, but he's had some injuries here he, and there, and he plays through it a lot, but. Uh, he's, he missed, is, he's missed. He missed two games in 2018 with a knee sprain, and that happened in Week Six. In Week Ten, he tore his ACL, missed another six games, and then he missed one playoff game in 2020, which was originally listed as as knee bursitis. He actually got that fine, and it was a different knee than the ACL he tore. Um, but it was actually like a de- gloving injury, which is some French term for it, where like I guess it was like a laceration, and he couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't play. Um, um, but so so I. Just, I don't know if it's he, rickety, man. He's and, old. And he seems rickety. The knees have had some problems. And yes, he's tied to Matthew Stafford. He's going to be 29 years old. He's up here because of what he did this year. You're paying for past production on Cooper Cup. Will he be good and, and points in your he's lineup? Like 90 catches. Nobody's last saying three that years. he's. I'm not sitting here saying that he's not going to be good. Like it just seems like you are now paying for, just like with the running backs, what they did instead of what they're going to be. Um, and I think there's just some better younger options that'll be around longer. And I'm just not going to be drafting him a 29 year old receiver who I just I feel you know some guys you feel like ah that's 29 and he I, I feel good about it and he's 29 and I feel like just seems like you know he's had a couple of lower le- lower body kind of rickety. He had one. He had an ACL tear. He had, That's it. He had multiple dings on those legs. You just listed a couple. I, mean, then, I listed and then one you said other he had ding, the ACL. and he wasn't. He didn't even miss a game for it. I'm allowed to think he seems rickety, and to me, over the course of watching him, of, of being like a lot of cues, a lot of like, oh, he's, he's not practicing, he's not doing this, he's not doing that, he's just got this, he's ball, got that. Mad balls every he's game. been great this year. I am not debating. I'm, I'm not, not saying this just. This I'm year. not it's shitting. Been every year. I'm, he's been pretty good, pretty solid every year and I where you got him this year he's a league winner where you'll oh, be sure. drafting him this year you're probably making a mistake in the value that's what that's what I'm saying you're paying disagree. for I, you're paying for past production with Cooper Cup here you're not getting the, if he was in the top of the second just round can't do that. or in the bottom of the first that would be you there you'd be banking on Jerry Rice type numbers next year but yeah, in the I, bottom part of the second round no, I can't. I can't do it. I'm. I. I just went through all those other guys and said I can't. I'm just not do like a Cooper Cup is only up here because of this crazy season he's having right now, and he's probably not going to do that again. And you're probably paying too much to get paying for what he's doing now, and probably not what's going to happen in the next two years for him. I'm not he's saying gonna that be, he's going to repeat. He bill this he'll season. be fine, and he's not going to kill he'll you. Be great. He just might not be astronomical. He'll be great. I mean, great's probably a stretch. Can, he'll be probably pretty consistent as long as that knee stays unrickety. Um, looks pretty goddamn good he, this year. He looks fine. He looks very Doesn't good. Doesn't look at he all looks, like a rickety wide receiver. Don't be looks, putting that on my man. He looks good. Uh, he's been great. But how many times have been we seen this phenomenal. happen? Over and over and over again, where you have this one great season and then you chase it forever, and it's usually not at twenty going into your 29th season. That's just he's all those things don't add up. Season. This not, is not great season. Not this is an like amazing he's having season. now for the, what you're paying for him at 29. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He's never been this good, and he's 29 years old, and it's Stafford. Stafford is absolutely elevating the game. The Rams need to figure out what they're going to do moving forward. Like it's not working putting up these numbers with Cooper Cup right now. It's it they they've taken a little bit of a step back. They got to probably dial up some things and figure out. Hey, let's get this run game a little bit more involved. Let's not just drop back straight back on all these plays. So I'm just not I'm not going to be interested in spending my second round pick on a 29 year old wide receiver who had a great season this year if he was 23 then sure he'd be way up the list he'd be and like buy cooper first. cup buy cooper he'd cup he'd be the first buy cooper pick. cup but 
you know, I'm just, I'm just not doing it. I can't, I can't do you. You could do whatever you want. I, I think that's just a, I think that's a bad move. And I think if you weren't all up on this guy, you would be like, oh, that's a bad move too. You can't do that. You're paying for past production and you're, you're never going to get it back. And it's just like, he's going to be good. Nobody's saying he's not going to be good. Great. I mean, great. He's great this year. That's no, what he's, I'm saying. He, he's it's not just, great this year. He is astronomically he's, phenomenal. He's so far past great. He's great this year. He's the he league winner. He can regress winner. to great. He can regress to the no, greatness mean. No. Yeah. This is that's a that's a gross Steve Cooper. That's a gross overpay at that point right there. Properly pro- properly rated. Let's move along. Definitely not properly rated. Wait, you you get it's just I can't understand how you're not seeing how you're paying for what's going on now, probably not what's going to be in the future. How could you be He's 29 years old? So's Devontae Adams. I, that's ridiculous. Why would so's you ever Diggs. why would you ever pick Devontae Adams up there? Like Well, because you don't least, even know if Devontae's least, gonna have Aaron at least Rodgers for next Deva- year. At least for Devontae Adams, he's been regarded as the best receiver in the game for years. One that's of the, the difference. One of the best. Cooper Cup's never been regarded as the best receiver in the game. And that's because he ran Ever. four six. You know, he's that's never going to get up there. I'm sure Devontae I bet Adams now he's considered as one of the too. best right wide now, receivers in the again, game. Again, because you're playing it like redraft. You're saying, oh, he's the best. It's just it's it's recent. All he's had is Jared Goff, being, and now he has Stafford, and it just that's went fine. Boo! Right. He's still got Stafford. I know for a fact for two more years. That's straight great. facts. That's great. That is Don't straight. Don't know facts. what's going to happen with Devontae. That's great. He's a free agent. He could go with he could go with uh, a Raj. He could a Raj could stay. They both could stay, or it could be neither of those. He's twenty nine years old. I'm not drafting him in the first or second round. Is that happening? No way. That's ridiculous. That's it. That's I, that doesn't even make sense. No sense does it make at all. Like I don't think I want to either, but because of those question marks, if I knew it was him and Aaron Rodgers for two more years, I'm saying Cooper Cup too. Cooper Cup's right in there. I can't do it. But no he way. has the quarterback and the stability. Who cares? He's I, everyone years cares. Old. He's never been all this these good running back. He's scoring more points than all these running backs, and and you, you're going to take the just, running back for two more years. You think that he's going to repeat that? That's what I'm saying. He's going to get. You're paying. You're paying the premium for what he's doing now. I disagree. Yeah, and what you, he's doing now is first round money. <laughs> you can't, you can't put him in there because he's twenty nine years old. Devontae's You're just slotting him that. into the second round right now because you think you have to when there's no reason that you should be paying that price for a twenty nine year old receiver. He's just a hater. I'm not a hater. I like Cooper Cup a lot. You hate him. I don't. Ha- I've never hated on Cooper Cup ever. Not once. Hmm. I don't know. I remember a rookie draft three or four years ago. Y'all boys didn't even want to discuss it. Cooper Cup. What in the world are you talking about? Well, Big Co is like, well, he's a he's a wide receiver in rookie drafts. So I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm i zero percent chance. That I took I, him in the rookie mock it up before he fuck it up after he ran a four six and nobody wanted to fuck with him at all because he can't be good running a four six. Yeah. Stats and facts. All right, so we got Terry McLaurin coming in here next. <laughs> um, 26 years old. I, I don't know if he's trending towards 27 or not. Um, I like Terry McLaurin. He needs a quarterback to really elevate him into being a, a superstar because I think it is there. He's he's very good. He's been great with nothing. Um, he's been an Allen Robinson type kind of guy where, you know, it's just been trash. He'll turn his, 27 in April. His entire career. Um, and if he could just, if they could get. Um, well, I got that wrong. If 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 he could just get a even a there was talks of maybe a three way trade with Tua Tonga being um, a trade to Washington that would be outstanding uh, in a three way deal that would just a guy like him would be absolutely outstanding for a guy like Terry McLaurin who turned twenty six in September will be twenty seven uh, at the beginning of next year uh, so I'm down with Scary Terry there uh, that's that's a nice a nice little spot. I I could add him so there. So because getting, he's a year and a half a younger years than younger Cup, there. you're down. Two years. I mean, Cooper Cup will be 29 in in June, I believe. Um, so he's a year and nine months younger. Basically, that's enough two, to two years younger. Yeah, I mean, and and that gives me two more years. You've like, never seen do McLaurin do anything close to what what Cup. I can't doing. have this conversation. I already told you exactly how I feel about Cooper Cup and why I think it's an overpay. I can't have this conversation anymore you're just projecting with McLaurin this high I I'm not take, I, I, I don't want to take McLaurin in the second round I'm Fuck fine that. with, that's fine you don't have to I don't really want to take McLaurin in the second okay. who said All who right. said yeah I don't really want to take McLaurin you right said now you're I gotta fine. have a, you just said you're I said fine I'm with fine it. with it I didn't right. say yeah I'll, I, when that's I, pretty much if saying, it was, yeah I, if I said 
I said absolutely not for Cooper Cup. I said I said yeah, fine with it. It's I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not like yeah, that's great. Definitely want to take Terry McLaurin there. Didn't say that one time. You don't even said, wanna, you don't want to take it. any of these don't, guys. I don't want. That's what I don't like any of these guys. Well, it's fucking. It sucks right now. This sucks. <laughs> this absolutely sucks. Like there's nobody fun here to take. There's a bunch of older dudes who you're you're playing in such this small window and. You know, yeah, Terry McLaurin, I, I think he could be a superstar with the right quarterback, and you do get two extra years with him. So, sure, if you want to say before he's, you know, he's three years before he's 30, like, I, that's 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 how I'm going to base it on. I'll, I'll take that, I guess. That's I'm fine with that. That's mm. okay. I'm, you know, Sus. that's all right. Um, Sus, logic, whatever. That's not, it's not. It's, it's, You're fine it's, with it. <laughs> I'm fine with it. He had, he Take take this year away from Cup, and he's still not the player that Cup's been prior to this year. What are you talking about? Terry McLaurin's been fantastic since he got in the league. He, I'm saying I know he's good. He hasn't been putting up points like Cup has. He has been putting up points like Cup has. Not like Cup has. Okay, well, Javante Williams is going to elevate himself. Yeah, to the top of go this list, way up. My man's twenty-one years old. Melvin's out of there next year. I doubt they bring him back. And come, come December ADP, he's going to be up. And come January ADP, as soon as Melvin's not on the on the board for the Broncos, Javante's a first round pick. I think because he looks awesome. He looks awesome. He looks apart. He's doing to these dudes in the NFL just what he was doing to them in college and give him the rock, let him have the lion's share. He's up 12 spots from September. From 24, that's going up another 12 easily. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely the guy that I could see being in the first round and being, if, if he gets a little juice at the end of the season here, um, he, he could be a guy that everybody's going to be on He's he looked he, he has explosive uh, traits when when you watch him he he looks really fun he's the guy that the public will really jump on I think if he gets in there uh, there was a little bit of Melvin went out and came back in uh, you saw a little shift uh, in snap percentage I think some of that had to do with Melvin you know going out in that game um, came back in but he was he's been very good he's been pretty productive when he's out there and I like everything um, about. Javante Williams and, and where he's trending. Um, and He's and a think, guy you could get excited about on the second round, huh? He's going to be, oh, for sure. I mean, that's now, now we're talking about this is, that's a good, that's a value pick right there. That's, that's, I'm all in on that. That is, that is top quality. That's like, yeah, that's, that. here we go. Circle that one. That's great. That is fantastic. That, that, that could be all the way at five or six by the time 10, 12. He's, there's, Going to be a very small percentage window that he doesn't end up being a first round pick uh, next year or the top of the second round pick. Because just look at what we're dealing with right now. Look at all these players who are 29, 28, running backs who are 27. Um, just there's there's nothing to love here. There's nothing to get excited about. There's nothing to be like, yeah, I feel good about that. Um, it's just Javante is, is is the guy so far that has, you got to circle that and be super excited about it. Um so, you know, that's that ends up round two. Uh, we're going to try to move this along a little quicker now. Uh, Debo Samuels, the next guy, pretty neutral on that one, too. Uh, could be could be great. Still pretty young. Plays pretty aggressively. Um, is, is it is his play? It's his play style, his aggressive, reckless abandon. That is I mean, that giving you, you pause. You got, you got the play style and the injury history um, is got to play into that a little bit. It's a little bit of a risky play at 25 is it seems like it's a little high but he's been fantastic and the Niners kind of re rebranding to the brand that they were when they went all the way to the Super Bowl um, and have been healthy at times last year what just in being physical imposing their will Debo fits perfectly into there whether he's catching the ball or playing running back uh, he's been outstanding this year again much like Cooper Cup where you drafted him this year He's a great league winner for you. Now you're putting a lot of responsibility on that draft pick to really perform week in, week out, and be in your lineup every week. And when Debo has had some some times where uh, it hasn't been there um, and it hasn't been available, so he's a stud. He's a stud when he's healthy. He's for the most part been healthy. Did just get nicked up, but I mean they fucking moved him to running back. So 
that just leads even more to that aggressive play style. He's an unrestricted free agent in 2023. I would imagine that they're going to fill that up again. He does exact. He fits what the Niners want to do to a T. Right. And they need him. They got to have him. So I would imagine he's getting filled up again. And you put him with Shanny on a second contract, and I'm I'm in. <coughs> I love it. He does play a little bit aggressive. Uh, he he probably should run out of bounds instead of putting his shoulder down to hit someone. You know, maybe just be get a little smarter. Maybe he maybe he develops that. I'm not sure. I don't know if I take. I don't know if I take him over Godwin and Deontay. I, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, so now we're kind of getting into a chunk of guys that you know. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll take these guys. I'll take them at the, where they're at. I, I like <laughs> I like what's going on here. I like the guys. Uh, you got. Debo Samuel starting this third round off. Antonio Gibson, Deontay Johnson, Joe Mixon at 28, Chris Godwin at 29, T. Higgins at 30, uh, Derrick Henry at 31, which eh, who knows, uh, Calvin Ridley, Travis Kelsey, uh, J.K. Dobbins, DeAndre Hopkins, and Amari Cooper kind of rounding this round out here. And like you said, yeah, Antonio Gibson's the next guy. Deontay Johnson's the next guy after that. Mixon's the next guy after that. Godwin, Higgins. Give me all of those guys. I like yeah. every single one of those guys. Gibson right now looked great in this last game. If you look at the stat line and didn't see the game, the box score doesn't look outstanding. And McKissick could be well, a the little... yards per carry was not great. Right. Could be a thorn in the side with McKissick there. I think he is McKissick's finally... McKissick's out of there next year, are though. You, are you sure? I did. I looked okay. it up. It's, he's uh, he's out of there next year. Maybe they bring him back. Rivera loves him. They do need a second guy. But he had... Gibson had seven catches in this last game. If right. you're going to give my man seven catches and the goal work, and every time he touches it, it's like five or ten yards, which there was a lot of skewed stats in that game because they were just running in on third and one, the same play over and over again, getting stuffed multiple times. Bringing that yeah. yards per carry down. He had a long run called back on a suspect block on Jamal Adams. And if he had that long run, it would have jumped that. The yards game he per played looked up. way better than the box score reflected. And right. his fantasy points were good because he catches two point conversion and did break off some runs carries. there. Um, but if you're going to give catches. me the volume of Gibson, you can get that line a little better. You can get a better. Uh, QB to take a little pressure off of him and Gibson is just kind of cracking the surface of being a running back let alone an NFL running back yep. did you know he only uh, had 73 touches in college this is, a, this is a college wide receiver uh, which you know leads people to believe that you know why can't we get him more involved in the passing game but hey I'm okay with giving give another guy some reps and don't 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 burn him out but McKissick does take a little bit of the the, the big upside away from uh, Gibson, but I, I think Gibson will end up being further up this list just because what we've been looking at here. Right, um, and, and again, and he's he's twenty three. He, he was unhealthy with that injury in the beginning of the season. Right, some nick, some shown, broken shown, bone in his uh, shin. They should have shut him down. He fracture, definitely I think, looks in the shin or something. He so. definitely looks sluggish there in the middle of the season. And I was like, how does this ever get better? You know, how's it gonna heal itself playing fucking football? But it did. He looked healthy. That's the thing to take away more so than the points was that he looked healthy in this last game. He looked explosive, and he looked phenomenal. Right. Uh, so, you know, Gibson, Deontay Johnson, absolutely love him. Probably one of the biggest misses I've had evaluating rookies, just not on him really at all, and then kind of came around this last year and just – didn't do enough to put him on enough rosters and trade for him in this off season. Um, he's just been old, reliable, old, faithful, and I'm not even sure you've seen the full uh, scope of what could be because I think he could be a lot better in a run after catch scenario where they kind of almost use him as an extension of a sh run game where he gets in, in traffic a lot. But if he if you could get him on the move in, in a Debo kind of Ayuk uh, Shanahan kind of deal where you could get his yak. Uh, moving, yeah. I think you could see even more Deontay Johnson. So I love him. I think he could be, I think he could and should be up up above a lot of these guys that we just talked about. Um, even you, with, you're not worried even, about now, just because I leaving. just they, they they're going to bring in a veteran and they're, they're going to figure it out. Uh, they'll they'll be fine at the quarterback position. Um, so and then and then you got Joe Mixon who. Out of all these running backs right now, league winner, um, been kind of the nicked up guy who 
people got off of because it's been two years now. Everyone's calling for a breakout, and this is the third, and finally it's happening. There wasn't a whole lot about it, and he's been absolutely outstanding. The Bengals offenses has moved, taken a big step forward. Bur- Burrow looks good. T looks good. Chase looks good. They're, they're moving. The defense looks for real, um, and I, I, I love – what Joe Mixon is not getting enough respect right now. He should be shot up this list and, and above a lot of those running backs that we've already talked about. I would right. Take I mean, him. let's take it back to the second round here. You're going to take him over Zeke? Chubb, I basically take Aaron him Jones. over all those guys right now. And if you wanted to say Chubb over him, that's fine. But Mixon's got the pass catching upside. And, and I think you're just seeing right now, like, all right, you're finally getting your full complement of Mixon right now in a, in a decent offense. And, and while. Nick Chubb can be the engine, I think, whereas Mixon maybe isn't quite an engine guy. He certainly can be. Um, and we're seeing the talent really blossom Around right in front of our too. eyes. Right. Yeah. So I, I love that. And then next two guys are Godwin and Higgins. Give me those guys. And love Higgins it. is even younger than Godwin. Godwin's 22, man. A, Higgins uh, is 22. Godwin's 25. Godwin's going to be a free agent. I don't know what will happen. He, he's been... He's awesome. I love awesome. that guy. I, he should be above some of these guys if, if if he could get to the right place. And obviously with Tom, he can support a bunch of guys and maybe he comes back. But if he could be a guy who even, you know, required even more target share and more uh, spread of the offense, he, he could be just an absolute monster. He already is. And like you said, T. Higgins. 22 years old, going to be splitting time with Chase. But we've seen we're seeing right now Kirk D. Cousins supporting a top, you know, two and six, I think, are, are Thielen and Jefferson or something yeah. like that. They're, he's supporting two top 12 dynasty uh, receivers, and and Joe Burrow can absolutely get that done um, and, right. and is. And, and you're going to have some games where it's not a T game, it's a chase game, and Chase breaks a couple long ones and doesn't give the T the opportunity to do what he does and get those red zone targets that he could absolutely be just vacuuming up. But um, even in the chase games, T's gotten you the 13 PPR right. points. Like He's got the floor. And then, and then the ceiling is there also because there's going to be games where Chase needs the PPR floor because T is taking it off the top. Because you saw what happened on that game, the touchdown that he had, and I, and, and I guess he had one that he could have had another one. Yeah. But the one, the play that he made, it was like a 54-yard touchdown pass where he was like, you ran down the field, and he separated in the end zone and went up as a 6'4", 215-pound monster, contorted his body, back shoulder catch. You can't guard that. And that's right. what's going to happen, and that and that's one play that can make your day. And then he's got the PPR floor too, so like he, he's awesome. He's, even, and he's even twenty two years have... old, man. Like I'll take T over a lot of these dudes. Like he, give me T over Deontay. I'm gonna take him over Godwin. Give him over probably Debo. Your Clemson showing a little bit, but go Tigers. Um, probably maybe a little aggressive on that because Tyler 22. Boyd is still tied into that offense, and and you know there's there's some games where you might have to deal with you know. Not the best stat line from T. Higgins. We've seen it a couple times this year, um, but it happens. For the most part, a, I've been playing him a lot every of, game. A lot of receivers have those days. It happens. Twenty-two. You know, it happens. Shit happens. You yeah. know, I like I like the player, and I like where he is, and I like the the quarterback. I like the ecosystem. So sure, Derrick Henry and Calvin Ridley next two guys. Obviously, a lot of questions surrounding those guys. Probably out on them for now. Uh, we'll see what happens with Calvin Ridley. I have all the faith in the world that he'll be back. And Derrick Henry with a broken foot, with a with a bruiser like that, TBD. I was already kind of out on Henry in, in Dynasty. He proved me wrong once again. Um, but you know, right now, he you know, I'm I'm definitely a little scared of him. Um, Travis yeah. Kelsey coming in here at 33. If Travis Kelsey was uh he's just fucking about to be 33 years old like this is just, it's crazy like he, he keeps being he? very solid i mean i don't know he's 32 i was just assuming that he's 32 um i thought he was 31 i'll i'll, I'll maybe effort. he just turned 32 I'll uh, but you know if he's in the situation that he's in i guess it's still worth it tight end premium sure he, he's crushing it just again seems like you know you're already Drafted him pretty high this last year, and and he's he's staying. You know, he just turned thirty two. Stay okay, so he'll be thirty two and the thirty three season will be next season into the season halfway through. So, you know, it's a it's a it's a tough that's a tough pill to swallow too. I think. I mean, yeah. these are all a couple of especially just, with the 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 Chiefs' offense not being what we thought that it might be. Still they being, had a, still they had being a good pretty game. solid. They had a around. good game two weeks ago and then a bye week this past week, so it was like they didn't do anything bad. So the narrative is like going up with with Mahomes and the Chiefs, but it wasn't great 
for for a lot of this year, but Kelsey was still good, but not great, not right. elite. You know, he's not winning you games like yeah. he, like he like he bought, like he paid for. Right, but still being very good in tight end premium and, and really helping you along um, better than most tight ends, I'm sure. Um, but he's not wide receiver one, you know. Right. So then we're getting down to Dobbins, which he's going to end up being up 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 higher. And and I've I've done some trading for J.K. Dobbins on on uh, in the in this off season on sure. on teams where you know I'm not a contender and I've been selling some pieces and and trying to get J.K. Dobbins off a contender who he is not helping him, uh, but need want pieces now to try to win that I'm not ready to do so. So I've, I've been acquiring a lot of J.K. Dobbins nuke. Well, real quick on J.K. Dobbins, like it was just, it's, it's amazing. It te- it shows you how hard it is to find a running back and how important running backs are. The three guys that went out before the season even started before this ADP was done in September: Acres, J.K. Dobbins, and Travis Etienne. From September to November, their values have all drastically increased. After being on IR for the year, their values have gone up through the course of the yeah. season. Because you see, in the old guys go down, and 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 anticipating this new crop, and it's a bummer you didn't get to see them. It's such a bummer you're not getting to see them on the field right now because them boys will be up even higher. But the people are seeing the forest through the trees by elevating these dudes, even though they're hurt. Right, Travis Kelsey still tight end one, and and but you know, uh, not by a ton, and and still still being pretty productive overall. Thirty four according to Fantasy Pros PPR, sixteen point seven points a game, one hundred eighty three point five points, uh, not in tight end premium. So he's still doing his thing. Uh, it's not elite level craziness, um, but uh, still being very, very, very consistent for you. It's just, it's just, it feels feels so wrong to be drafting a thirty two year old. Feels so player. wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, so here comes Nuke at twenty nine, probably now a properly rated old guy, maybe here getting into the late and, third, fourth round, and with him um, having missed the past two or three games, that this is going down even more. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, and, he, and and he's. Long to be a, a, a Although, cardinal. He's definitely going to be a cardinal. They have a the, in 2024. They could cut him with 7.7 million dead. So he got paid. They paid him for what he did in Houston. Houston didn't want to pay him. They traded him. Cardinals brought him in. They had to give him the world. So I don't even see how they can get out of that contract. And so he's tied to Kyler Murray. Yeah. So maybe a deal on Nuke here coming up. Maybe. Maybe so. Mari um, Cooper rounds out the third round. He's been Go Tigers. Uh, hit or miss for you. Um, and then now, now you got the stretch of COVID here, but um, which is, it sounds like he's going to play tomorrow. So yeah, sounds sounds like it. We don't know where he's at. Better get physically. back. You can't be missing three games with COVID. Nah. Um, but you know when he's out there, he's pretty good. He, when he's healthy, he's he's elite uh, as far as the player, the route running, what he can do out on the field. Um, he does have some up and down stretches. It's hard to keep um, defending Amari Cooper year in and year out because I want to, and he's still fairly young. He's twenty six, and he'll be. You know, they could cut him with six million dead next year, and, and maybe they do that, maybe they don't. I don't know if that's good or bad for him to get a fresh start. I just every year going to bat for Amari Cooper is starting to get old. Starting to get old, Mark. I could Cooper. I could feel you there, but I, I think I'm still willing to swing it a little bit more, and maybe he drops down a little bit. Oh, for I, sure. I, I think I'm still okay with it. Um, but yeah, you're right. It is getting trickier and trickier now. Mahomes makes his first appearance, start off the fourth round here. Whatever. <laughs> um, what Jerry else? Judy comes in, um, which I, I I love that there's some respect on his name. Jerry mm-hmm. Judy's has been very strong when he's out there. He's he's a technician. He's a he's a, a he's stud. still 22 Just years old. Just a real old. a real stud in the making here. So you know you got the age, you got the the ability. You just need the quarterback play. And even with Teddy, he's been good. Even even through some shit situations, he's been pretty good. Uh, even though last year nobody really wanted to give him his due when he still had a pretty good rookie season. Just there was awesome rookie seasons going on. Um, so yeah, Jerry Judy here. Then you got Michael Pittman, uh, who's in a little bit of a lull, but you know, has been pretty solid all season. Just it's amazing what two down weeks will do for you because if he would have had, if he'd have continued that recently, it'd be hard not to be like, Pittman got to go up. But it's right. like two weeks. I'm going to be fickle enough to have some hesitancy, you know? But T.Y.'s back. 
right? So that that does affect some things and, yeah. and, and had a good game this past week. But Pittman's a stud. It's clear that he can win downfield and he can get your right. your, 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 your your A dot is through the roof, your yards for catch is where you want it to be. I don't need it to be there. It's nice, I guess. Right. Uh, but he can win downfield and score t- score deep touchdowns and beast people in the air, and, and that, that's that's an easy way to get your day made in yeah. one play. Feel okay about Judy and, and feel pretty good about Judy and, and Pittman here at mm-hmm. 39. And now we're at Clyde Edwards Alaire at 40. All big steel sign, there, I think. Sign me up again. For now sure. we're getting into this grouping of, of running backs who we were hoping would be the changing of the guard here. We, Dobbins was up above. We got Clyde Edwards Alaire from the Jonathan Taylor draft class. We got Josh Jacobs from the draft class before that coming up. We got David Montgomery down here and Miles Sanders is a little further down who finally getting a chance to maybe be a, a dominant running back in the scheme and isn't on the field right now. So that's keeping him down out of this discussion for running backs. And Josh Jacobs, uh, you know, has, has his critics. Um, but we're kind of getting into a field again where it's all right. Now we can take some more running back stabs. Um, so kind of as we round this out, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back on that. Um, but Clyde Edwards, I think, is they're showing that I think they need to be more a little bit more invested in what the running back position has to offer uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. You saw mm-hmm. that with um, uh, Damian, not Damian, Daryl Williams uh, in his absence had some had some pretty good games. So I think had Cl- the haters on Roto World being like Daryl Williams is better than Clyde's ever looked like. God yeah. damn, well, such just got, got good involvement in there and. Uh, you know, realizing a couple different things, I think, for the Chiefs that that offense was kind of stuck in the mud and maybe take take these easy things, get the running back a little bit more involved and, and keep him involved in the passing game. And, and Clyde Edwards is plus in a lot of those categories. And I'm I'm big, big Clyde believer, and it's going to take me a lot to get off of that train. And, and it, it really hasn't been as terrible as everybody likes to make it out to be. Right, still uh, only 22. Fuck out of here with so, the Clyde hate. Um, definitely like that. Then Josh Jacobs down with that. Um, Clyde... Claypool still in um, on that guy definitely still in on that guy Darren Waller has had a rough rough go here as far as where you were what you were expecting from him I think it's just kind of hey we're, we're just zeroed in on everything that Waller's doing right now and because nobody we're not scared of anybody else on this team much like a Hawkinson right now right um and and and, and maybe even a little bit of the rookie pits uh so th- those guys are maybe getting choked out a little bit but but uh Waller hasn't been quite what you wanted him to be just yet and now the knee injury um uh, but we we're always big proponents of Darren Waller it's always Waller over here uh so fine with that uh we got Waller in almost every tight end premium spot we can yeah. have him in and then Cortland Sutton comes in i think Cortland. he's going to keep dropping uh, Cortland, get out of the yard, Cortland. Just hasn't been good. Tim and Teddy just don't Time seem to have any juice. Um, it, it sucks because I do think he's a good player. They're, they're going to do something else. He's tied to the team. The offense is kind of just waiting to be like one of these offenses. Like, oh, look at all these weapons and we're bursting at the seams. Uh, so they just need the quarterback who can facilitate that. And uh, I think Cortland's a stud. This is. I think he's going to end up being a buy low by the end of all of this. I think so before they get another quarterback. Because if they bring in a stud, it's going to go back back up but he just got a deal i don't know if i love it we'll see what happens with the qb sitch he's a stud though he is a stud who can win downfield and make your play one day we were watching we started Cortland over a guy who's not on this list but should be elijah mitchell this week because we weren't sure how he was going to get back into this rotation if he was still banged up or not big mistake we lost because of it but we were watching the game, and it, or we're watching Red Zone, and, and Sutton doesn't have much, doesn't have much. And I'm like, hey, still a full half left. All he needs is one play. Just one play, baby. And and that's that's the appeal of these big dudes who can win downfield is you just need the one play, and then everything will be okay. Yep. We didn't get, he haven't, hasn't gotten the, the big play in the last, like, I don't know, since he's been back. Big block of weeks. So uh, the, de- the value's probably going down until they bring in another quarterback, but definitely down to buy some – by low right now and moving forward with Cortland before they before yeah. next season happens. And Devonta Smith is the next guy on the list. Get him I, up. I could shoot him way up this shoot list. Him I, up. I got nothing but confidence in that guy. I think he's great. He just continues to get better. Jalen Hurts right now is is um, maybe you know he's not De- Devonta Smith isn't afforded the luxury as some of these other younger receivers who have just uh, you know pocket passing quarterbacks to get them uh, the 
sh- target share and, and balls that they need. Right. When you're attempting uh, 15 passes a game, how is any wide right. receiver going to thrive? And, and it but seems, he has been. He, he has had certainly. He looks great. Some, he looks the great. Slim on, Reaper. If you watch their games, you can see that it's no problem for him in this NFL to get open, and you just need somebody who can get him the ball a little more. Not that maybe Jalen Hurts couldn't be developed into that person, but right now I think the Eagles are going to be going in a different direction and finding somebody a little bit more dynamic as a passer because I don't know if they're as willing to be like the Ravens and build the team around Lamar Jackson and let him develop into, you know, what he might be able to become, uh, they're gonna. I think they're gonna go in a different direction with all the draft capital that they have. So you know, Devonte Smith, Devonta Smith should be great, and I'm all in on him. Kittle's next. Montgomery down here at 47. He was a league winner last year. They just needed a little bit of an offensive line revamp for him to be absolutely outstanding. Um, and give me give me Monty all day. Then Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, and Josh Allen rounding this thing out. Mike Evans and Keenan Allen, two just guys who have been reliable as 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 you can get in the fantasy spectrum. Mike Evans always gets a little hated on. He's he's always been you know up and down as far as fantasy points go, but reliable as a fantasy asset for the most part. And Keenan Allen uh, tied to tied to uh, the the Chargers and Herbert there for another year or two, I believe. At least two, I think they have. Where's Keenan at in this old ass list? They, so he's he, five point four dead and twenty three. So why wouldn't you fill up Keenan for? He old up, but I mean, you're two you're, more years you're probably going to Herbert keep probably. This, that's going to keep going down. I think the ADP and that the the age is going to be built in, and he'll probably be able to get you 10, 12, 15 points a game um, for chunks of the season. So I like Keenan. Those are all great. So that rounds out the top fifty. Uh, we'll come back at the end here and kind of go back through the end uh, through some guys that didn't quite make the list here. But as you can see, we went through this whole list. I don't like a good majority of the players that are up here. It's just not fun to draft the age spectrum of these guys, and and especially for the running backs is like, man, th- this makes this really hard to to be as bullish as I would be on saying, hey, draft the running back here, draft this running back here, and draft that running back here. Like I don't really want to draft any of them. And like you said in the beginning, to start this all off, there could be a lot of zero RB drafting that kind of goes or zero RB ish drafting that goes on. It's cyclical. Like you said, when we first started this thing a lot, a while ago, years ago, I forget what season it was, but everybody at least had just gotten all, it was a heavy R zero RB season. And what happened was, is it pushed a bunch of really good running backs down and I can recall winning a decent amount of money that that year because nobody wanted the running backs because for, for whatever reason because satellite backs we were catching passes were great the theoretics Theo. of the world and and, and um, you know maybe there were some hurt running backs and some older running backs and they just got pushed down and, and you just you you can't just come in here like you said, to lead it off you said it well you can't come in here bullish with just like this is the strategy that I'm going to employ on this every year Don't each draft yourself. is going to be different and this year is setting up for me to be like hey maybe I do only come out of this first round or two with without a running back or maybe it's just one if it sets up like it normally would where I'm usually trying to get but in the first four, I'm usually trying to get two or three because they're gone after that and it's like well I, I want them and I like them and and you can play this game a bunch of different ways i've had the most success with a more robust running back and then finding wide receiver ports a la cooper cups of the world robert woods of the world all those kind of guys who marvin Devontae Jones adams is, early on in his marvin career Jones you were all over world. Devontae uh, before you yeah. stood all those I, you know it's easier to find those guys who stay consistent than a running back that you would find like that that would stay consistent for you whereas you know you go through this list and you look down it in the ecklers and the zeeks and the uh cmc's and the barclays and you know barclays kind of got you a little bit the last year and cmc too but those guys when you hit them and they hit and and they've been at the top of that list for so long and you felt good because they were 22 23 24 25 now starting to get in there you felt good about it and now we don't feel so good about it i'm not gonna get myself i'm fine fine give me a like i'm not I'm not anti-receiver. I just like what I like, and it's like, fine, I'm going to take these receivers then, and I'll take my Kyle Pitts up there and elevate him a little bit because this isn't working out for me right now. Now, by the time midseason rolls around, maybe Gibson, Dobbins, Akers, uh, who, Mixon, who's you know e. kind of right in that weird age range. He might be a little lower. E.T., all those guys come up, and now I'm like, all right, well, you know, maybe in the second round I'm, I'm more comfortable taking those if – if Najee doesn't get maybe pushed back a little bit, but I don't think he will just because of the positional scarcity. Um, and, you know, so that's basically 
in some summarization of kind of what I'm taking from this top 50 is, is I don't love everybody. And then there was some chunks as we got a little later where it was like, yeah, I like that. And that's basically what you're just trying to keep your eyes on of like, Hey, I'm not going to get pigeonholed into one style of drafting. I'm going to find where these chunks of guys that I like and feel good about are. And I'm going to go ahead and target them in that area, whether that means trading back and maybe you don't get what people say you can get for trading back, but you trade back, you get some assets and then you get the guys that you want and not just taking, uh, you know, a 27 year old, uh, who's up here, 27 year old Alvin Kamara, which at in round one or it's top of round two. Um, so, you know, and, and the upside with the, with the wide receivers is yes, you're probably going to get a little bit longer shelf life and probably going to get less possible, long stints of injuries uh, but you know Odell's but way and, less points so uh, some seasons way less points like you said Cooper Cup's on one this season he's scoring a lot of points there, there's certainly seasons where some Devontae wide Adams receivers get up there year. and score a lot of points but there's so many more receivers in the league than Tyree there are running Kill. backs and there's a lot more three there's three wide receivers on the field at a time sometimes four wide receivers on the field at a time and there's typically one running back and there's only a couple teams that really use the one kind of running back heavy system and that's why they're so important important to me and I like them now again if you went in here this year and you drafted whatever one of those running backs that was the, the big dogs that fell the latest to you those those stalwart kind of guys and then you came back and you found and you got your Lenny Fournette and you got maybe a Chase Edmonds who was getting some points for you early and and those type of guys then yeah you smashed it out of the park great you you're, you're probably crushing um, but you know, if you didn't, if you selected all of those, all of the wrong running backs and you can't get a pile of running backs together to save your life, that that, that sucks just as bad. And now you're in a position without running backs and you're forced to either trade a bunch of stuff on your team away to get a running back or trade stuff up to try to get one of those elite running backs. No one's uh, ever trying to draft. trade for a wide receiver in my league messages. Um, and, and at the same point of, of these, you know, if you drafted the guys that got hurt, plenty of wide receivers that you drafted in the first or second round are not fucking paying off for you. Right. So it's a crapshoot no matter sure. what. Ton of luck involved in this game. It's why it's so fucking maddening. If there wasn't luck involved, we'd win every time. Phil Helmuth. <laughs> uh, so just relax. Don't, don't freak out. Don't pigeonhole yourself. Just, just go with the ebbs and flows of the draft. Be flexible. Find the value. All right, let's yeah, take it to a couple guys. Don't get caught up in chasing last year's points. Unless it's Cooper Cup. <laughs> that, if, if there's one guy that can give you 110%, it's Cooper yeah, Cup. Uh, he certainly could. Uh, all right, some some honorable mentions. Some guys that should have been in the top 50. Right? Yeah, and again, the ADP, It's these guys it's might have had skewed, some good weeks. Even, when even, even, with, even with the skewedness and the, and the, and the delayedness, Jalen Waddell should absolutely have been in the top 50. Yes. We've, like, how could you have... How, he didn't move at all. I think he was 56, and he's 56 now. So from September to November, he didn't move at all. He didn't think like, what how, you saw in the field was good enough to move right, him up a little, a little bit. a little bit. Like six, like how could he not move up at all? And and yes, it took to last week to to you saw him get loose. We've said it on the show throughout our rookie reports and whatnot that we've done this season. He hasn't gotten loose yet. You saw him get loose. You saw him hit that deep crosser, and it looked like what he was doing in Alabama. All right, it looked like him and Tua at Alabama with that deep crosser, uh, and and getting loose downfield. Uh, but but he was still putting up awesome production for a rookie. Uh, Guy who was who was had a questionable ankle injury. You weren't sure that there was. They floated in the preseason that it had lingered back, and it cost it cast some doubt out there about man because it was a pretty bad injury, and they rushed him back to play him in the championship game for Alabama, and they probably shouldn't have done that. And he got, he he exited that game, and it's like why did you even bring him back in record time? Like y'all selfish motherfuckers. Right. Well, just I like, think it was probably him. He probably wanted to. Play. And it's 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 uh, college college programs don't give a fuck about these players yeah. like I, he, I i'm pretty sure i recall him saying hey, he i'm really sure. really really wanted to i'm play. sure who wouldn't want to make it back for the championship right. game caught a ball whatever but there was questions and then to see those questions get answered and not elevate them what are y'all doing yeah we we, we we did a video that was basically you gotta buy Go Jalen waddle. waddle i've been trying to get him have late now but haven't had much success i might maybe possibly have a little something in the works right now but 
We shall see. Uh, Mark Andrews was the other name right off this list that didn't quite make it. If you're playing tight end premium, now you do have Bateman kind of entering the fold here who we haven't really seen. Um, but Mark Andrews has been old reliable. If you're tight end premium, he's 25 years old. He's basically the guy who is most in tune with Lamar Jackson on intermediate stuff and, and certainly in the red zone. Um, and then the guy right Down below him, seam. Marquise Brown, uh, both guys have, have Hollywood. Uh, he did jump up a, a yeah. 64 spots from 116 to 52, but yeah, probably got to elevate Hollywood up over some of those older wide receivers that we didn't like. And then, oh my gosh. Where the fuck is Elijah Mitchell? Well, Miles, <laughs> Miles Sanders down here a little bit. Uh, he's, nah, he's, fuck he's Miles had a, Sanders. He's, Let's talk about Elijah. Re really, really, he's <laughs> he's really making me hate him. I need him right now, and he could be super useful. Um, but just, just can't stay healthy. Can't be on the field right now, so that's a bummer. Because uh, I think you could he be finally got he that could philosophy be, change in Philadelphia. Be, and he can't get on the fucking field. He could be showing you, you know, why you were intrigued with all that athleticism right now. Uh, Ayuk, you know, kind of stabilized his value, but then you get down here, like you said, to seventy Mitchell. and seventy-one. You got a lot. Elijah Moore and Elijah Mitchell. Um, Mitchell Moore too. Gotta, gotta Mitchell is too. potentially a, a, a league winner right now. Has been outstanding. Um, looks great. I said, you know, while we did a show a little while back on a rookie report that, you know, if I had Mitchell, which and I have a lot of Mitchell, I wouldn't sell. Him, I wouldn't sell him if I had one or two shares. But since I have, you know, twelve dynasty teams, ten dynasty teams, or whatever. And I got Elijah Mitchell pretty much on any single one of them that I don't play against you in one of them uh, or in them in. And I would maybe consider selling him for a first plus because the San Francisco 49ers just, you know, they're not tied to one running back necessarily. Um, and Jeff Wilson was going to come back and maybe Sermon would get in the fold. But it just seems like they're they They love Mitch. I knew they loved Mitchell coming into it, which is why I was so into buying him as much as I could. Right. Nobody want to um, listen to the reports about him being ahead of Sermon in the offseason. Right. It's like no fucking shit. And sometimes there's some Look some bullshit there and some semantics. But it's I just heard over I mean, and over and over go, how, they, how didn't, much they love that guy. Like We weren't drafting Elijah over Sermon because of that news. Right. But we liked hearing that and we believed it in a sense. It, it was a. It was a tick up, and we already liked the dude. Well, at the cost that free. it cost you right. to, to buy into some of the pick. hype and a, and the guy that we kind of liked anyway. A third round rookie, right? Pick? Exactly. Smash that shit out of the park. Right. So, but now that Jeff Wilson's back, Elijah Mitchell just just seems to be the guy that they love, and maybe they found the guy that they're going to go with. I'm sure they'll they'll rotate in some other guys. I'm sure Sermon will get his his chances in there, being a third round pick and all. Um, but He's Mitchell seems to be the guy, and and what found money that is, and it's fantastic. Um, and then Elijah Moore, man, like was had him kind of grouped into that end end of the first uh, early second group of wide receivers that we didn't know really know what to do with with the Terrace Marshalls, the Rondell Moores, and him, and you know ended up kind of being he he typically for us was probably the third one out of those guys, and he's right now as the leader in the clubhouse for me. I've been doing everything I can to try to get as much as Elijah Moore as I possibly can. He looks so good with the ball in his hands. He looks like they're trying to get him to be the focal point of that offense. He looks electric. He's great down the field. Uh, he looks really fast. He looks really good. He scores points when he's on the field. Uh, and, and, you know, as much as I like Rondell Moore, and we haven't quite seen anything from Terrace yet, and he could be great. Um, but Rondell Moore is is going to require for the offense to be, you know, a little bit more fabricated around him. And I'm not right. sure when when that's going to happen. And it certainly could happen. And Rondell Moore is great. I'm not trying to talk any shit about Rondell Moore. I Elite certainly like him. Dependent. That was um, the video we put out about right. Rondell Moore. And he is a little bit dependent upon the scheme and they need to scheme a little bit. Right. And he could evolve. It's just early. But but Moore is already being heavily involved in Elijah. the scheme. Elijah Moore and sorry, they're both more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Elijah Moore just looks like he's going to be a big part of this offense moving forward. And it's not to say Rondell can't, but I like everything I'm seeing from more. I'm not trying, this isn't a shit on Rondell and give more, but like I didn't give more quite enough do. And now I want to, I want to get as much as more I can a, before you want to you. I want to get as much as I can before it gets out of hand. Cause I think it's going to get out of hand. Cause I, he, he just looks just you know, twitchy and different when he has the ball in his hands. And speaking of which, Kadarius Tony is down here. If he's been able to be healthy, uh, Just shut him down, Giants. He would have been, you know, been been very good. And and Kareem Hunt down here for if you're if you're zero RB in it, that's your fucking guy. Uh, that's the guy that you you know that would be a guy if you hit if you if you drafted Kareem Hunt and Leonard Fournette and you got one of those other 
running James backs Connor. near up at the top, or maybe a Connor who's scored a lot of touchdowns. You're you're crushing it. You're like, look at how smart I am. That's that's awesome. You got like, fucking lucky. That's great. That's fantastic. Cream Hunt's awesome. Yeah. Um, and he he's ton of Cream Hunt over he's here. He's way down here um, at seventy eight. So maybe that's somebody that you could you know try to shop for a little bit. Um, you couldn't get Kareem Hunt as your RB1 in leagues that we were in because he was my RB3. Yeah, he was at like 16, 17 points a game, had a, had a two-point game this last game, and then had a game where he kind of exited that hurt that average a little bit. Um, but he, he, he's he been nothing but fucking awesome. So uh, that's going to about do it for me. I don't, you got anybody else, anything else you want to talk about? I know we did the freaking the one round of a rookie redo and, and – we didn't take Elijah Moore there. We we left him out again. So I just want to keep giving Elijah Moore his fucking due because that guy is looking like he could be the real deal. I like it. No, nah, I'm good, man. You got All anything right. else? No, I'm I'm good. Go ahead and, and like and subscribe and leave us a five-star review if you're listening on the podcast. Sorry we went a little long today. Maybe it was a little too much for some of you guys, but, but come back on the next one. Don't judge us on this one. Judge us on the next one. And... Uh, Hey, we got we hit fifty fucking guys plus. So yeah, what are we supposed to do? Just, what are we supposed to do? Just trying to put your finger on the pulse of what the fuck's going on right now, and and you know maybe it was too much. Maybe should have summarized that a little, down a little better. But uh, we'll we be around next time. Dudes. If we had one or two topics, I'd feel bad. But we hit 50, 50 plus dudes. A lot of discussion. We're gonna have some guests on in the future. Maybe get into some more of this. Figure out some rankings. Uh, be looking towards next year in these startups for you guys and your pleasure. Appreciate yeah, we'll be you doing hanging with us. All sorts of prospect talk uh, moving into December, January, having people on to talk about those with us. Um, so got a lot of fun stuff in store. So be sure to stick around. Appreciate y'all. Peace.